we're going to cover how to linearize a differential equation. So for example, if I have a differential equation dx dt equals a uh, function of x, we're going to work on linearizing this right-hand side of the equation, f of x, and get it into a form that we can apply some more numerical analysis, some of the linear systems theory. Okay, so this f of x that's on the right-hand side, that's going to be equal to f of x naught, the point at which we're going to linearize, plus the derivative of f with respect to x. We're going to evaluate that at x naught, and then take multiply it by x minus x naught, the point at which we linearize it about. So this is what we're going to plug in here to the right-hand side of our equation, and then our differential equation is linearized. Let's go over an example uh, really quick. So let's say we had something like dx dt equals negative x squared. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, linearize that. And so my negative x squared is approximately equal to, with the linearization, is going to be this function. Uh, I'm going to evaluate this at um, x not equals 2. OK, so I'm going to plug that in. And so I'm going to have negative uh, 4, so 2 squared, plus the derivative of this. And that's going to be negative 2x. And I'll put plug in my 2 there. And then I'm going to multiply that by x minus 2. OK, so there's my linear differential equation. dx dt equals negative 4 and minus 2. 4 times x minus 2. And I could simplify that further. Okay, so that's going to be equal to 4 minus 4x. There's my differential equation in the linearized form. Okay, so let's um, do this for, uh, you know, talk about where this linearization form comes. Uh, from if you just uh, you know add additional terms to like a Taylor series approximation, um, you would have something like this: x equals x naught, okay, times x minus x naught squared, and you'd have one divided by two factorial. You could add additional terms as well. Taylor series can go out uh, to many terms, and you could basically have these higher order polynomials that approximate the original function and get very close to that original function. Okay, and so you'd have cubed plus plus plus. Okay, we're just going to ignore all of these terms. Sometimes we can approximate the error with this first leading term right there. The more terms that you use to approximate the error, you can get a better estimate of the error of your linear model. Okay, so um, let's go with two variables now. Let's say we don't just have one variable, but we have two variables for our uh, linearization. So let's say we have f of x comma y, and we have our differential equation uh, dx dt equals, and I'm going to change this actually instead of y, I'll change that to u, one of our inputs. So it's a general nonlinear function right here, and we want to linearize this. So similarly to how we did it before, we're going to approximate the right-hand side of that with, uh, we're going to plug in f of x naught, u naught. So those are the points at which we linearize about. And then plus, and then in this case, we'll take the partial of f with respect to x. And then we're going to plug in x equals x naught and u equals u naught. So the steady state uh, or the uh, linearization point values. And then we'll do x minus x naught plus partial of f with respect to u. And I'm also going to plug in these initial values here, u naught and uh, u minus u naught. OK, so there's our linearization formula right there. We basically just take the partial derivatives right here. Those are going to be constants. So you're going to have a constant here, like you could go alpha plus beta times x minus x naught plus gamma times u minus u naught. So it's going to simplify down to just numbers right here. Okay, and numbers right here as well. And then you're going to be left with just your variables right there, linear variables. 
Okay, and that's going to be equal to uh, dx dt. Okay, there it is. Uh, we have a linearized expression. Sometimes we just rename what's inside these parentheses as deviation variables. So a deviation variable, I'll do x prime uh, equals x minus x naught. And then u prime equals u minus u naught. Okay, and then this just further simplifies. If I plug in, for example, I'm just going to rearrange this a little bit. x equals x prime plus x naught. Plug that in right here. And that becomes dx prime plus x naught dt equals, and we have an alpha plus beta times x prime plus gamma times u prime. Okay, if you just take, uh, separate this, dx prime plus dt, uh, dx naught dt, this one's going to be a constant, so that derivative with respect to time is zero. And then we have our alpha plus beta x prime plus gamma u prime. So there is a simplified version of this differential equation. If we select these, um, you know, x naught and u naught to be equal to steady state conditions, then it means that um, at steady state conditions, uh, these are going to go to uh, zero because um, at x equals x naught, those and u equals u naught, those are going to go to zero. And then this is equal to our derivative on our left hand side. And if there are steady state conditions, that derivative is going to go to zero. So therefore, alpha will be equal to zero as well. Okay, that's one of the nice things about uh, picking steady state conditions. And then your final, this is going to be your final um, linearized form for your equation in deviation variables. Okay, it's going to also be very similar to what we call a state space form. We'll cover that later, but that's going to be dx dt equals ax plus bu. And then we'll also have maybe an output term here. Okay, that's called a state space model. Okay, so this is one of the reasons why we want to linearize. We want to get into a form that we can automatically apply a lot of theory and nice things that we can do with that uh, equation. Okay, let's go over an example now. Now that we have our formula for linearization, which is right here. If you have additional terms, by the way, let's say you have a y in here or something like that, you just add an additional partial derivative with respect to that variable and then multiply it by that variable minus its linearization point. Okay, let's go on to an example problem. Let's do um, just a differential equation. This is going to be fairly simple. dx dt equals minus x squared pl uh, plus the square root of u. So this is our example problem. And we're just going to uh, do a couple things with this. We're going to linearize it, first of all. And then once we linearize it, we're going to determine some steady state values. So first of all, we'll just say our steady state value for u is going to be equal to uh, 16. OK, and then uh, we can calculate what the steady state value for x is going to be. Because at uh, steady state, dx dt equals 0. And so if I just take that equation right here, and say dx dt is zero, then I'm just going to rearrange this and say x squared equals square root of u, and x squared equals, now these are going to be the steady state values, um, x squared equals four, okay, because I took 16, square root of 16, and then I'm going to say that x naught is, I take the square root of both sides, and that's going to be equal to two. Okay, it could be plus or minus two, I guess. Um, but we're just gonna use two. Okay, there's our steady, there are steady state conditions. Okay, um, so we're gonna use those uh, to, for our linearization point. Those are gonna be the, the points at which we're gonna linearize this function. And so I am going to do dx dt. 
Now and I'm going to take um, this function right here. I'm going to do negative x squared naught plus uh, square root of u naught. Plug in the not the not values there, the initial condition values. That's going to be what we covered before, which is this function. Just plug in on this right hand side the x naught and u naught. Okay, and so if you plug those in this is going to be equal to zero. Now what we're going to do is take the partial derivative of this with respect to x and so that is going to be equal to negative 2x and then we plug in the steady state value so that's going to be equal to negative 4 and then I multiply by x minus x naught okay now let's take the partial derivative of the second term and that is going to be equal to plus uh, one half uh, times uh, one divided by square root of u and I'll plug in the u naught okay so all of this right here is going to become one eighth and then I'll have u minus u naught there is my linearized equation let's go and simplify this a little bit more um, you can put it in deviation variable form, such as uh, dx prime dt equals negative 4 times x prime plus 1 eighth times u prime. Okay, that would be your linearized equation right there. If you want to leave it in this other form, you could just say dx dt equals negative 4 x minus x naught plus one eighth u minus u naught. Okay, both are valid, um, but I'm gonna actually work in this one just to avoid uh, confusion with these deviation variables. Okay, so let's go on and um, let's see. Let's, uh, we can also do this in Python, for example. So um, if you have something that's very complicated and you need the help of something like SymPy, you can have it calculate your partial derivatives for you. I'll just go ahead and show you how to do that. Um, and you can also do it numerically in Python as well. I'll just show you where I have some of that code. And then if you wanna go and uh, download it and use some of that, you can. Um, just come to the apmonitor.com website, to the course, and all this material is gonna be here on the right under linearization. And you'll see this uh, formula right here for the linearization and the derivation and this example problem that we're going through right here. Um, if you come down to show solution, it's going to walk through that as well. Also post this video on that page. Um, okay, and then we're going to go through this analytic solution with Python. You can also get this numeric solution with Python. Just come down here and select the Git code. And then you can download it. Don't just try to copy it. Sometimes there's some formatting things with that. Okay, let me see if this thing is um, up yet. Um, okay, where's my Jupyter notebook? Let me try this one more time. I'll go over to Spider if this doesn't work. And let me go ahead and start up Spider as well. Looks like there was an issue with the Jupyter notebook right now. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, so I'm going to use Spider instead. Um, Spider or Jupyter Notebook, you can use SymPy, and uh, it'll show you some uh, analytic expressions with those. Okay, um, hmm, looks like Spider's taking a little while as well. Okay, I'll wait till that comes up, and then we'll go back to it. But basically, you can take your partial derivatives with uh, Spider or with anything that's IPython. Um, Okay, and then uh, I'll just show you a, a 3D uh, plot of the linearized function, just the right-hand side of the equation, and the um, you know how that compares. So this is just some um, some code right here that implements. Uh, it's very similar to something you just find online. Just replace your x and u, and then your function here, and then you can plot a surface plot. This is going to be my linearized function, the wireframe. And then I have my surface plot here as well. I just change the uh, axis limits and give it labels. So if you need to do any of this, you can go to the um, website that I pointed you to or to the matplotlib tutorials, something very similar to what they have online. 
Okay, and then if I um, create this, here's my nonlinear function. That's the multicolored one there. And the linear function is this kind of mesh, uh, this wireframe right there. You see, you can see at the point of u equals 16, uh, right over here, and x equals 2, the two are going to exactly line up. Okay, and then as it gets further away, they're going to start deviating more. And so that's the, um, so what we want to do though is see, um, you know, how far away we can deviate before the two, um, you know, in simulation, simulating these, these differential equations, how far they're going to get away before there's really going to be a problem with our linear uh, equation. Okay, and so um, what I'm going to do here is I've got uh, this IPython console, and I'll go ahead and import uh, SymPy as SP, and I'll do sp.init printing. Uh, that's the very first thing I want to do with uh, be able to show um, the symbols in uh, SymPy, and then I'll say X and U are going to be my uh, symbols. Okay, symbols, and they're going to be X, and then U. Okay, and then the next thing I want to do is define my equation. dx dt is equal to negative X squared. And don't forget to use the SymPy function for square root instead of just like a NumPy or something like that. You got to use the SymPy. Um, I'll make this one a little bit bigger. And then let's go ahead and print um, the uh, diff. Okay, so we're going to take the partial derivative of dx dt with respect to x. And then we'll do the same thing with respect to uh, u as well. Okay, and then let me run this. And let's see if it comes up with a solution. So this is good if you're... Uh, expression is very complicated and so you can see right down here uh, uh, let me highlight that okay you can see that it came up with the uh, solutions the uh, analytic solutions in symbolic form to these partial derivatives okay very simple in this case but just in case you need it for something more complicated okay and then let me go back uh, to the final part let's go ahead and simulate this differential equation and um, I want to compare the linear to the nonlinear. So the first thing I'm going to do is import NumPy, import ODE int, and then we'll integrate both of these uh, with a doublet test in our U, our input value, and then see how the two behave. So I'll import matplotlib for just plotting as well. So I need to first of all get the function that returns the derivatives of these two functions. Okay, I'm going to say that x1 uh, is going to be equal to my very first z element, and x2, that's going to be, uh, the other one is going to return, is going to be the z1 element. Okay, and this is going to be, x1 is going to be my nonlinear function that I had before. Here's my linearized function that I derived, and then I'm going to return the derivatives of those two. So that's what I need to give to ODE int. I need to return dz dt. Okay, let's go ahead and calculate the steady state conditions there. You have those recorded with my initial condition, Z naught. Okay, so that's going to be equal to just X steady state and X steady state because it's for the linear and for the nonlinear function. They're going to both start at 2. Okay, my final time is going to be 10. My number of time points, I'm just going to say I'm going to have 10 uh, time points uh, per second there of simulation. And then so I do a linearly space between zero and final time with that number of time points. So 101 time points, 10 seconds of simulation. And then I'm going to have my step input. So first of all, I'm going to define u to be equal to my initial condition everywhere. So it means it's just not going to change. And then I'm going to uh, have a magnitude of 8 on my step. Now you can go back in the code later and change this to a lower magnitude. Uh, and see if you get uh, better agreement between the linear and the nonlinear model. So I'm going to change m up at time of 1. And so that's going to be at um, u11 uh, onward. 
Okay, I'm going to add m to that. And then I'm going to go down by 2 at time 4. So then I'm going to subtract off 2 times m. And then I'm going to change up at time 7. So this is a doublet test. And then I'm going to just create some empty storage for x1 and x2 so I can store those values and plot them later. I'm going to record some initial conditions. Those are just my initial z0 values. Those are both equal to 2. And then I'm going to solve my ODE. And I'm going to do that in a loop because I want to change the value of u at every, potentially at every time point, but it's only going to change a couple times uh, throughout. Okay, so I'm going to just set up the time span. I'm just going to have each time interval, I'm going to integrate one time step forward for 100 different time steps. And uh, there's my ODE int. I need my model, my initial conditions, my time span. And then I have that additional argument, which is u. And I'm just going to do the ui value. Okay, I'm going to store the solution for plotting now. x1 and x2. Those are just the very last values I encountered for my return to z solution. And also update my initial condition for the next time it goes through that loop. Let's go ahead and plot the results now. Um, create the subplot. And this one's going to be just the green line. This is going to be my, my u value. I'll put a grid on there. It's a legend. Let's go into the second subplot. That's just going to be my x1 and x2 for my nonlinear and linear functions. And I'm going to put an x label on there as well. And grid as well. Um, and legend. And then just show the plot. Okay, so there is my uh, function. I'll go into spider and just load this. I'll open that and let's go to desktop. And I'll do compare linear. There it is. And I'll run this. Okay, and there you can see the uh, linear versus nonlinear. And um, you know, there's a command to make this bigger as well. I'll just run this instead and with IDLE. A little easier to resize those plots manually. And I'll run it. Okay, and there you can see the difference between the linear and the nonlinear. You can see that it does actually a fairly good job even with these large steps. Okay, as we go further away, we're going to get worse and worse on the um, you know, the agreement between the two, but let's just go in and just try this. Let's change the magnitude of our step from 8 and change it down to something like 1 instead. And um, so think for a moment, do you think it's going to have better agreement or worse agreement with a lower uh, deviation from the linear region? So if you thought that it was going to have less, uh, deviation, then you're right. It's going to be a better approximation. And you can see that closer to the point of linearization, we're going to have a better approximation of our nonlinear function. So um, I'll go ahead and just leave you with this link then. Uh, this one is our model linearization link, and it shows how to linearize any differential equation and get it into a standard form that we can use later. Um, like this one right here, uh, very similar to what we're going to be covering in state space later on. Uh, and then there's this example with the solution and the source code there if you want to go through that uh, yourself.